Good morning and welcome to today's lecture in BCIT Technology Teacher Education 4010, our introduction to Arduino programming class. I hope you've got your coffee ready because for the last couple of weeks we've been using the Tinkercad Arduino simulator to learn some of the basic input and output controls on the Arduino microcontroller. And the Tinkercad simulator is awesome, but eventually it comes time to do something real, something entertaining. And in keeping with my tradition of out-of-date cultural references, let's zip back to 1983 and a possible copyright infringement to let Matthew Broderick and Ali Sheedy ask the question for today's lecture. Yes, they do. How can I talk? We're not making it talk. This box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Oh. <laughs> I think I missed them. Yeah, weird, isn't it? Yeah. Love to. How about global thermonuclear war? That was the plot point. Would you two prefer a good game of chess? <laughs> Later. Let's play global Thermonuclear war. Fine. <laughs> no, Matthew. No, where, where, where does that come from? That was movies in the early 80s. Uh, goodbye. Let's get that out of there. And let's take a look at what we're actually going to be playing. Now, here on my desk, I've got the game that we are going to play. We are going to play the Reaction Timer game. And uh, it's not quite as exciting as, um, you know, randomly choosing to play a game that involves blowing up the planet. But um, it's a great way to start because uh, what we're going to do is we've just uh, got a button and we took a look at um, how to use buttons the other day. So a digital input right here. In fact, we're using the same pin as our uh, last lesson, I think. So if you've got that switch still hooked into pin eight, you're good to go. And we're using our LCD screen right over here. Now, if your LCD screen's not working, uh, then all of the printout commands that we use lcd.print for, you can use serial.print and send them over to the Arduino serial monitor. So you don't need the LCD to do this, but it's nice to have it all right here uh, on the board. And then we've got a couple of LEDs hooked up and they're going to be part of our game as well. And uh, they are uh, going to, um, well, uh, be part of our reaction game. So what this is, is it's a reaction timer. And what we're going to do is uh, it says press to begin. Now, when we press the button, uh, come on, camera, focus in here a little bit better. Uh, this green light will turn on and that will indicate that we've started the timing sequence. And then there will be a random delay between two and four seconds and then the red light will turn on. And then the question is, how quickly can you press that button after the red light turns on? So press to begin. Green light on. Red light on, press, and oh, 325 milliseconds. So 0 0.325 seconds of a delay. That's pretty slow. Yesterday, I, I, I once got 26 milliseconds, but I was, you know, really, really, uh, uh, that was a bit fluke. I usually do around 150. Let's see here. 167. That's getting down closer to my average. I just realized the first time I was actually watching the display on my computer monitor rather than watching it right down here. And there's a slight time lag, as you know, between the time things go into the camera and get processed. And yeah. Yeah, that's my excuse and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so um, simple game, right? You just press a button to start and um, then, you, then you turn on an LED and you wait a little while and then you press a button to stop. This is why I like to start with a simple game because even simple games have interesting uh, little things going on. So to help you out, um, I'm gonna walk you through the code and if you're in my class, I'll have sent you the code or put it up on D2L. So you'll have access to this code to begin with. You don't have to go and type it all in. In fact, uh, if YouTube lets me, I'm just gonna post it right into the um, description of this video. So if you're not in my class, but 
for some strange sadistic reason you're watching the videos anyway, um, then uh, you can have access to the code as well. Okay, so let's take a look and think about what this needs to do. Because really, uh, although right now we're talking about programming, programming is not the high level uh, part of making computers work. Really, the programming is uh, kind of like pounding the nails. There are system architects and system analysts who go through and when you're working with a big computer problem and how you're going to solve a giant network problem, they're not so concerned about the actual commands and the semicolons and which variable name you're going to use. They're concerned with the big picture of coming up with a flowchart of how the different modules interact with each other and how they all tie together. And so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, just think this through and we're going to do a little bit of uh, systems analysis on our reaction timer game. Now, I've already gone through and done some of this to get us started right here. Okay, I'm going to turn on a little bit of light, so let's see. Just some more constant lighting might get a bit better focus in there. So for our reaction timer game, um, yeah, we have our little introduction up at the beginning that says reaction timer game. But once we get into our main loop, this is, this is what I'm thinking about, how the game repeats over and over uh, and again. Um, we're going to start by saying press a button to begin or press button to begin. Um, and uh, uh, anyway, I, I think I ended up changing that and crossing out button because as you recall, we've got a 16 by two LCD screen and there was more than 16 characters on there. So if you had a bigger screen, press button to begin would be a perfect thing to put in there. But anyway, um, yeah, we make, we make changes as we go along. Now the next command, well, as you can see, I'm not putting this in Arduino language. This is just kind of in a little bit of a flow chart in pseudocode, you might call it. In some ways, you might think back to some of your projects that you've done in other classes where you've had to come up with instructions for somebody on how to do something. And really, that's all we're doing in programming is we're coming up with the most literal set of instructions possible because the computer takes everything you say absolutely literally, does exactly what you tell it to, and not a whit more. Okay, and as you'll see, that starts to become a problem when you start interfacing literal computers with random humans. But we'll get there in a moment. Okay, so we want to wait for the button to be pressed and released. Okay, now when you think about button pressing, normally we say, oh, wait for somebody to press the button. Well, there's times when you wait for somebody to pre press the button and you do it as soon as the button is pressed. And then there's other times when things activate when the button is released. And two entirely separate operations to the computer, and we need to give it instructions on how to do both. So I'll show you the while command that's going to let us wait for a button to be pressed. While is a really cool command. OK, uh, then uh, we're into our begin mode. We're going to uh, print begin onto the LCD right there and uh, turn the green LED on. Okay, so that's just gonna be a digital write command. Uh, we're gonna wait for a random time. So I'm gonna show you how you can find out uh, how to make a random time. And we're gonna talk about the time variables and some of the uh, time things that are going on inside the Arduino. We've talked a little bit about millis and micros and delay in the past. So we'll, we'll get a little bit more into time today. And then we turn the red LED on, which is just a digital write. So right now we're going through OK, uh, I think. And then this is where sometimes things get a little bit uh, tricky for people. We will record the current time, OK? Wait for the button to be pressed and then calculate how long it took for the button to be pressed. OK, now we don't know what the time is going to be when that red LED turns on because it was a random delay. So what we're going to do is, you know, we're basically going to be going along and then we're going to take out our stopwatch and there's a little stopwatch inside the Arduino called the Millie's timer. And when that button is pressed, we'll say, OK, we are, are sorry. When that light turns on, we'll say we're at 15 seconds. And when they press the button, we're at 20 seconds, and the difference is going to be five seconds. Okay, so we're going to do it mathematically using some computer commands, but that's basically it. We're timing things the way you'd time them on a watch. 
And uh, always good to think about, well, how would I do this in the real world? Because the computer's timer actually lets us do it pretty much similar to that. Okay, and uh, then finally, once we've calculated how long it took for the button to be pressed, then we want to display the time. Now, you'll notice I've added comments in right here because quite frankly, I didn't get this flowchart perfectly right the first time I went through it. First time I went through it, I, um, yeah, I got pretty close, but as I ran the program, I realized that my text on the LCD display was overlapping with uh, text on the LCD display. It wasn't formatting nicely, so I had to come through and come up with some formatting in here. Um, yeah, I spent all this time talking about the computer being literal and doing what you tell it to and not a whit more. First time around, I forgot to turn the LEDs off made it really hard to start the game over when the LEDs were already on. So got to remember to turn the LEDs off down here. Um, and then I had this little problem in here that uh, wouldn't really occur to you until you'd ran the program. But when you think about it, okay, right here, it says, wait for the button to be pressed. I press the button right here. Okay, calculate how long it took for it to be pressed comes in here, I display the time, and then I come back right around here. All of this takes place so fast that my finger was still on the button when it came back up to this stage right here. And it said, oh, the button's being pressed. I took my finger off, the button was released, and it started the game over immediately using this button press. So I needed another wait down here to wait for the, this button to be released. Uh, just so we could come back up to the top. Whew. A lot going on in there. Okay, well, let's take a look at some of the code and how we implement these things. So uh, take a moment now and in your Arduino IDE, the integrated development environment, where we write all the code, uh, copy and paste the code uh, that I've given you. So let's uh, just minimize this screen. And here we have the uh, text of the Arduino code right in here. So take a look and hopefully you've uh, got this uh, source code. You don't need to type it all in. Now, uh, because I've got a bit more screen real estate in here and I wanna make it a little easier for you to read and see what I'm doing, the Arduino IDE does have a preferences section where you can change the editor font size. Now. If you're seeing it perfectly clearly on your screen, you don't have to touch a thing, but uh, just to help you see it a little more clearly on my screen, I am going to set my font size up to 16 and uh, that'll hopefully come through just a little bit clearer without uh, running off the edge of your uh, screen while you're watching it. Hope that's big enough. Um, if you still need it bigger, uh, either drop me a note in class or, um, you know, if you're just watching, feel free to leave a comment below. Uh, I know if you're watching it on your phone, that's gonna be pretty tiny. Okay, so a few things to think about as we're going through and doing this. Uh, this is going to be our first program where we actually write the code in the Arduino IDE rather than testing it out in the Tinkercad simulator first. This code would all work in the Tinkercad simulator, but because the Tinkercad simulator runs slowly relative to the real hardware, um, it's it's just not going to give you a realistic time. You're going to always be getting low times. And it's about time that we started shifting over to using real code. Yeah. I mean, drag and drop is nice, but yeah, we're getting started. Okay, so uh, here we go. Now, uh, you'll notice that I start a lot of the lines with slash slash, and those lines are kind of grayed out. Now, those, as we've talked about before, are comment lines, okay? So those are for me talking to you, or actually more accurately, me talking to me five years down the road when somebody comes to me with a question about this code and says, Jason, what's going on here? I watched your video and it doesn't make any sense. And I've completely forgotten writing the code and recording this video, but I can go back to my comments and figure out what I meant to do, okay? now. I have added a few extra comments to clarify some things. And these lines right along here, break your Arduino code into three main sections. And I define those sections as the declarations and definitions. Now, this isn't in many ways part of your program. This is setting up your program. This is where you're creating variables 
and defining them with values. So you're telling the Arduino, for instance, in here that uh, we are going to create a variable of type long. In fact, in this case, unsigned long, and I'll talk a little bit more about that as uh, in a few minutes. Um, and we're going to call it time, and we're going to set aside some memory space in our RAM, random access memory, where our variables are stored, and we're going to initialize that with a value of zero. Okay, so um, we're also telling it that we're going to use some words in here, so finish LED. Anytime the uh, program sees finish LED, which is going to be the red LED and my board, it could be any color that you want, so don't feel uptight if yours isn't red. Um, when that finish LED turns on, we're going to use the words finish LED instead of uh, pin nine. And the beauty of this is that if you're doing this on a different Arduino or you've hooked your LEDs up differently than I have, maybe your finish LED is hooked up to pin 12, you don't have to go through and look for every occurrence of that. You can parametrically come in here and change one parameter, and now your code is updated to match that. Not only that, it makes your code a lot easier to read when you've got some of these terms all defined up here at the beginning. And our button, for instance, is gonna be hooked up to pin eight. And uh, this is a big statement right up in here. The include statement, as we've said when we've been using the liquid crystal screen before. Okay, the liquid crystal dot h in between those um, uh, you know, uh, triangular brackets. There's a name for each of the different brackets, and I can't remember what they all are. But the triangle brackets, the round brackets, and the squiggly brackets are are, are enough. Um, in here, right here, this refers to a file name. And this file name exists on your computer. It's part of the files that came with the Arduino IDE. Or later on, I'll show you how we can go and download additional libraries to add additional superpowers to our Arduino. And uh, so this file is on there. And what we're saying is go and get everything from in there and just have those commands available for me. So because I am using a liquid crystal screen. And so when I say liquid crystal, I can create a liquid crystal device. I can call it LCD. Honestly, you could call this Bob if you wanted to, and just anywhere where you've got LCD in your program, you go know, LCD, right? You could say Bob, right? Um, you know, screen, right? You just have to set it up right in here. This, um, if you were using a, a fancier system with uh, more pins, you could hook up multiple liquid crystal screens and you just hook them up to different pins. In our case, we hooked ours up to pin seven, six, five, four, three, and two. Uh, so if your screen has been working, you don't have to rewire a thing, just leave it there, uh, hooked up to pins seven, six, five, four, three, and two on your Arduino. Okay, uh, so there we go. Uh, we've got our declarations and definitions coming in right here. And we'll talk a little bit more about why this is an unsigned long variable when we come back. The term const means that it's not really a variable, it's a constant. And basically, this is a command that when the computer does its compiling of the program, anywhere it sees finish LED, it just does a search and replace pulls out finish LED, puts the number nine in there. Um, like I say, makes things easier to read uh, for humans and easier to change if you change the pins or something like that in the future. Okay, um, so that is the section of code that I call declarations and definitions. And there's, um, the, there's no actual command. You're not telling the Arduino to do anything to its pins at this point. Uh, you're very limited in what you can do. You're just laying the ground rules, setting things up so that it works. Now, the setup routine, as we've talked about, I've uh, highlighted this section right in here. This is gonna run once at the beginning of your program. And this is where we tell the Arduino what our pin modes are going to be and where we uh, print our, you know, would you like to play a game or, you know, the reaction timer game onto the LCD screen. And this is a great place to put things in for a little bit of a diagnostic to make sure that your code is working properly. Okay, so you'll notice that right in here, um, I start out by, um, coming in here while well, we start up our LCD command in there 
and by saying 16 comma 2 we say 16 characters across by two lines high our uh, pin mode right in here uh, well our pin mode uh, you'll recall on the button you can either have a pull-up resistor on it and if you didn't get that watch the previous lecture because we talk about the pull-up resistor and a pull-down resistor and the importance of the two but the Arduino has an internal pull-up resistor and by saying that we're going to make the button an input underscore pull-up or turning on the Arduino's internal pull-up resistor which means and this is important when you're reading it okay the pin will read high when not pushed because that resistor inside the Arduino is hooked up to five volts and it's always holding the input pin at five volts until the switch, which is hooked to ground, is pushed. Of course, that's for a normally open switch. We also talked about normally open and normally closed switches last day. So good to go back and review that if you're not up on your uh, switch terminology. All right, uh, so then we have to set our LEDs to be outputs. And here you can see where I use start LED and finish LED. Okay, we define those terms right up here. So if you had your LEDs hooked up to different pins, you'd change those numbers up here and you wouldn't have to come down and change them down here because we're just referring to the parameter that was defined up at the top. Great. So. This sets everything up, it sets the pin mode, it activates the LCD screen, and now we just do a quick little test to make sure everything's gonna work. And so uh, we do our digital write, start LED goes high, finish LED goes high, we print the reaction game, and just to center things, I used a few spaces right in here at the beginning. Uh, our LCD set cursor command we've used before, this puts the text down onto the second line, and then again, I use some spaces to try and get it centered in there, put a little bit of a delay, clear the LCD, which also sets the cursor back up to the first line and the first character, or zero, zero position as it would be called, and uh, then we turn off the LEDs. So this all runs once at the beginning of the program. Now, this is all enclosed in squiggly brackets right here and you'll notice that if I put my mouse next to the opening squiggly bracket right in here it comes down here and there's a little box around the closing squiggly bracket and vice versa if I put my cursor down here and I'm blinking right next to that that means that these two brackets are linked together and you can picture those two that highlight when you do that as being the little orange lines that come over in the Tinkercad simulator and wrap your code together, okay? Inside here, um, we may have other squiggly brackets. You'll see that we use them again to wrap around code and that's because we can get multiple layers of brackets happening. Uh, let's see, anything else we need to talk about in the setup routine? I think that goes st pretty straightforward. Okay, so yes, loop is the commands that we'll keep repeating over and over I, until the end of the universe or until Matthew Broderick plays Global Thermonuclear War and loses. <sighs> 1983. Um, so here we go. This is what's going to repeat over and over and over again. and look at that it just manages to all fit onto one screen so hopefully i don't do too much scrolling around to mess things up okay i know it fits on one screen because when i click next to the opening cursor or the opening bracket i can see the closing bracket highlighted right down here okay now uh let's follow this through and see what we do okay so over on this uh line i say well what are we doing uh, we start out by saying, well, I had to change it, press to begin, and then I add the comment that we had to print on the top line just to try and keep our formatting nice and tidy. So what I've got in here is LCD set cursor, sets the cursor back to zero, zero, and press to begin. Now, you could use LCD clear in there, and feel free to go back and change that and experiment with that, and you'll see what happens, and you'll see why I chose not to use LCD clear. It takes you 30 seconds to change it and try it and play a game and see what happens. Um, it's not a big deal, and you know, 
the best way to see why I did it this way instead of using an LCD clear is to try the LCD clear and see what happens. Nothing will go up in smoke, at least not Washington or Moscow. Uh, okay, then uh, we've got LCD print, press to begin. I couldn't fit press button to begin, but uh, presumably people won't be pressing the LEDs. Okay, now this is a new command, the while command. Okay, and while is like an if, okay, but just as somebody says to you, do this, you know, drink your coffee, okay, while it is hot. You do a test on your coffee, and if the coffee is cold, you say, right, can't drink the coffee anymore, it's cold, and you break out of that loop. But if you do your test and the coffee is hot, you keep drinking the coffee while it's hot. So basically, this is a loop that's going to keep repeating over and over and over again, okay, until this condition is no longer true. So in here, we've got a command, digital read button. So when we do a digital read on button, Okay, now remember button is a pin and we've defined it to be the pin that's hooked up to our push button because we used a uh, input pull up command that pin will be high until our normally open switch is pressed connecting it to ground okay um, we use two equals because when we use two equals that's the question mark form of equals. If you use one equal sign, that is the command form. So if I only had one equal right there, what I would be telling the Arduino is I want you to make digital read button to be high. You know, go do this thing. And the Arduino would look at that and say, that command doesn't really make sense. I get what you're telling me, but my pins don't work that way because your button pin is an input. You configured it to be an input, not an output. So something outside the computer controls it, not something inside the computer. So don't use the singles equals. Now, it's a tricky thing because the computer will not tell you when you've made a mistake. Okay, so you have to think, am I asking a question or am I issuing a command? And if you're asking the question, then double equals. If you're telling it to put a value into a number you know, and issuing a command, single equal. Yeah, they could have probably made that a bit easier, but uh, back in back in the day when some of these languages were being developed, um, they, uh, you know, well, you, you saw Matthew Broderick's computer and these languages had their founding long before he started tapping away on a keyboard. Okay, so I've added some comments in here so that uh, if you're going through this a little bit more quickly or you come back to it in a, in a week and you're like, oh, I don't want to watch the video all over again, too many 1983 cultural references, um, then uh, you can come in here and hopefully you can figure it out what's going on from the comments. Okay, so this is where we wait for the button to be pressed. This is where we wait for the button to be released. Now, um, it is entirely possible that we don't put a semicolon after this, okay? You can also, uh, with a while command, put a opening bracket right in here, okay? And right in here, you could have a command in here and you could say delay one, okay? So you'll notice that now I've got a test statement right here and opening and closing brackets hugging I could have all sorts of code in right here. Um, yay, more code. Okay, I mean, I don't want that. Okay, I don't need that in there, but you can do that. Um, so that if you wanted to do something else, maybe you wanted the LEDs to flash while you're waiting for the button to be pressed, you could have a flash routine in there to make the LEDs flash because that would keep going over and over and over. And whatever was in those squiggly brackets held together in there would happen while 
the button was high, in other words, while you were waiting for the button to go low. So, uh, while command, very cool. Now, if any of these commands now start to sound confusing and you're really not getting them, highlight the command and uh, right click on it. And oh, I thought we had a help. Ah, there we go, right down there. Find in reference. Poof. Okay. If the Arduino has amazing help files. And you can learn a lot from going to the help files. And it's one of the reasons why I don't say go out and buy a textbook for this course. If you like textbooks, there's amazing books out there on the Arduino. Um, one of my favorites is the Arduino cookbook because it actually gets down into the bits and bytes level and it's very technically detailed, uh, but uh, maybe a bit beyond what you need for an introductory two hour a week course. Uh, so anyway, no, most of the resources you're gonna find are online and the help files are amazing, uh, even though they're sometimes written in not the most user-friendly language, okay? But you'll often find tutorials looked up to them. So if I talk about something and, <laughs> well, okay, um, I don't know where that went, but uh, that wasn't the demonstration I was looking for. There are tutorials for most of these things out there, and there is a whole reference for all of these commands. So for instance, if you're still not quite sure about pin mode, uh, find that Arduino reference and you can come in there and it talks about input pull up and you can go through and find somebody else explaining all of this to you, hopefully in a way that makes sense. So don't feel like this video is the fount of all knowledge about Arduinos. Um, it's just something to get you started and engage you in the process. Okay, so we beat the while loop here to death a little bit. And uh, so this is basically just one command right in here that waits for a button to be pressed and then waits for the button to be released. Then we clear the screen and then we print begin. You could print whatever you wanted in there. All right, um, now we've got a variable called delay. Okay, we set that delay variable right up here at the beginning. We started out with it equal to zero. And let me bring this back down here. And now you can change how long you want that delay to be. Now, I said we wanted a number between two and four seconds. Do you prefer something between one and three, five and 10? This all works out okay. What happens right in here is you can see we've got a single equal. And that means that we're issuing a command. We're telling the Arduino, do this thing. And the first thing we're telling it to do is a little bit of math. And here we have a command called random. And if you'd like to know more about the random command, okay, you'll no notice it's a command because it's in colored letters. Okay, Anything that you see in colored letters, the Arduino says, aha, that's something special. They've used one of my code words or keywords and those words all have special meaning. And you can just right click on it and say, find in reference. And here's your random command, okay? Now, uh, if you read that, you'll see that it's also got a random min max command. I could have said random 2000 comma 4000, okay? Um, and that would have worked out. And uh, there's a whole section right on here. It'll also talk about the random seed. Computers use what's called pseudo-random numbers. It's not really as random as rolling a dice because when you roll a dice, um, you know, there's so many little tiny human factors involved and computers are very precise in what they do. So if you want truly random numbers, what you have to do is come up with some way for a human to give it a seed number to generate the random number generator and start that random number process in its calculations. Uh, we're not really worried about that for this game. If it gives you the same number of milliseconds three times in a row, that's okay, uh, but it won't. Okay, uh, the random command on its own works pretty good, but if you want truly random numbers, you do need to generate a random seed. One of the ways that people do that is by having it um, time how long it takes a person to press a space bar or time how long it takes uh, the person to release the button when they um, do the 
push up and push down right here you could use that delay as a random seed you don't have to worry about that basically random number between 2000 and 4000 is what's happening right in here okay and then we do a digital write we turn the start led on okay so now in our code we're right in here where i turn the green led on we uh, printed begin this is turned on this is where we're going to wait a random time and we're going to use the delay command right in here and we're going to access this delay variable experienced programmers who are for some strange reason still watching at this point are going to say jason i think you've maybe going to have a problem there and don't worry we will come back to that but uh <clears throat> If you're, if you're watching this for the first time and you're thinking, hmm, what's the problem going to be in there? Then you're in the right state of mind, okay? That is an intentional error that we're going to clean up a little bit later on. All right, um, so we put a delay statement in there and then we say digital write finish LED comma high. Uh, so we turn on the red LED we record the time and we say the time right now is millis. Now millis is a really neat command. It's also got another command called micros and you can highlight them and right click to get the reference or you can just come up here to tools or sorry the help and you can go to the reference right here. That's another way to get into the reference files and you'll find all the command in here and under time You'll find millis right there and micros right here. The Arduino runs so fast that it can actually time the number of microseconds since it was turned on. And in a slightly more useful variable, because micros goes really fast, um, it can also time the number of milliseconds or thousandths of a seconds since it was turned on. Now, you'll recall that when we set up the delay and time variables that we used something called an unsigned long variable for them. Okay, in the past couple of videos, we spent some time talking about um, variable sizes. And so just on the screen right down here, we talked about how eight, make sure I get eight on here, two, four, six, eight bits is one byte. Okay, and that could hold a value between 0 to 255. Now, it can hold a whole bunch of other values. Uh, we could use it to say minus 127 to 128 as well. That's still 255 different variables. There's just a little bit of math that the Arduino does to say, oh, yeah, it fits, fits into that category. And... Uh, so anyways, that type of variable in the Arduino is something called a car variable because it's roughly enough information to store one character from a keyboard. And then we have another type of variable called the int. Uh, so this is an 8-bit variable that requires one byte of memory to store. And because our Arduino's central processing unit is an 8-bit processor, it can process one of those numbers right like that really really fast because it's all done in one step most of the time on the arduino we use int variables um, because those are bigger than that and you know 200 0 to 255 doesn't cover a lot of values but an int variable can hold 2 to the 16th minus 1 values or 0 to 2 to the 16th minus 1. It actually holds 2 to the 16th different values, which is good, but that still maxes out around 32,000, which means that after 32 seconds of counting milliseconds, okay, 32 milliseconds, you'd be at 32,000, and your timer would reset every 32 seconds, which isn't very good. So what the long variable is, okay, this is a two-byte variable in the Arduino, on some fancier computers, it's a four byte or a 64 bit variable, but the long variable can hold two 
to the 32nd different values. Now, if you do 2 to the 32nd, you'll see that it is a large number. Okay, 2, enter 32. Uh, there we go. Um, 4 billion. 294,967,296. Now, the unsigned part tells the um, Arduino that we're going to use those all as positive numbers. So we're going to go 0 to 4 billion because it's really hard to get negative time. Um, but uh, what that lets us do is that lets us say, well, how many seconds could we hold with a long variable? Well, divide by 1,000 because we're counting milliseconds, we could hold uh, 4 million seconds. How long would that last for? Well, that would be, uh, divide that by 60, 71,000 minutes, uh, or 1,193 hours, or 49.7 days. So this number, just by using, you know, uh, a four bit variable can count in milliseconds how long it's been since the Arduino started up out to 49.7 days. So you've got over a month of timing down to the millisecond on your Arduino from the time that it started up. I'm not sure what you're going to use that for either. However, if you're gonna run the Arduino for a really long period of time and timing is really important to what you're doing, then it's also important to know that after 49.7 days, that whole timer is going to reset to zero and your Arduino is going to think that it just was turned on. Okay. Now, if these variable types are causing you grief and you want to know a bit more about them, let me again direct you to the help file. And in the reference files, you will find uh, data types right in here. And you'll find a whole bunch of them the car, the unsigned car, okay, just means 0 to 255, the byte variable. There's our int. We use that a lot. And unsigned int, again, just means it starts at 0 and goes all the way up. No negative numbers in an unsigned variable. And here is our unsigned long variable. And uh, there's your calculation right in there. Hold 0 to 4 million 200 uh, blah, blah, blah. And you'll see that it also has links in to some other variables that you might use it with. But basically, the key thing about the unsigned long variable is that we use it for time because those numbers on the Arduino, the millis and the micros command, get really big really fast, so we need a really big variable to handle them. OK, that was a little bit of a detour into the code right there. But uh, so we record this really big number of milliseconds. And we wait for the button to be pressed. And then we've got this command right here where we do a little bit of math. OK, now um, we, when this command executes, it's going to execute the millis command first. So it's going to reach into the Arduino's memory where an internal counter has been keeping track of the number of milliseconds since it started. It's going to bring that num number out. And then our time variable which we'd stored earlier is going to come out. And then we are going to subtract the starting time from the finish time. And that difference right in there is going to become the new number stored in time right here. And this is now the number of milliseconds that we waited for the button to be pressed. Then we're going to say, set the cursor to the second line. OK, I should add that as a set cursor to second line, OK. And then we're going to print time, OK. So that's going to go five characters right across right there. And because it's in quotation marks, it's uh, going to print those exact words. You'll notice time down here is not in quotation marks, so it didn't get turned into blue. It's not a literal. That means uh, something that never changes if it's, uh, if it's fixed by being between the quotation marks. That's our, in computing talk, a literal. Down here, it's a variable. This is something that's going to change. And in fact, we just put a number into time right here. It will display that number. And then right after that, 
we'll put MS for milliseconds. Okay, we've displayed the time, we turn the LEDs off, digital write finish button low, and while the finish, uh, a digital read button equals low. Okay, this is where I said we had to add an extra little thing at the end just to make sure that the person did release the button and let go of it before we scooted back to the top and we did it all over again. Try putting that code onto your Arduino and let's see what we get as a result. I'm pausing right here intentionally so you can go and put this code on your Arduino. Give it a try. When you play it, see if you can figure out where the error was. So put me on pause for a second, upload this to your Arduino, go and play this for a little bit. And I said we were going to have an error where I use this delay statement. It's not an error with compiling. It's not an error with the Arduino. The code is going to do exactly what we want. The error is going to be because we let humans touch our code. Humans mess so many things up. Okay, press pause. Go give it a try. I'll be here when you come back. Okay, well, hopefully your uh, program is running properly. And when you press the button and release the button, the green light comes on and, oh, I got a little too excited there, sorry. Um, <laughs> I still got a lousy time anyway. Uh, so I gotta adjust the camera now. <laughs> So that all seems to work. But did you figure out how humans screw this thing up? Were you able to get a zero time? Like, watch how good I am. Look at that. Whew. Try getting a zero that well. What did you do to get the zero time? just like me, you cheated. And humans are known for doing this. Cheating, hacking, trying to build your computer to be resistant to humans is one of the real challenges, both in the system analysis and uh, programming. And so in here, we've got to say, well, what happened? Okay, and just follow that through and if you push that button too early, see that red light just flashes on for a fraction of a second right there, but my time is zero. Why am I getting zero and what am I going to do about that? Okay, well, the problem is coming, as I said, and people who've used uh, microcontrollers before are going to see, uh, I used, in the code that you are looking at and the code that I put up online, I used the delay statement to wait for a random time. So here's, I'm putting my little comments in here to change things. Don't use delay. Delay is actually considered a really awful term in a lot of programming because delay is a loop where the computer just sits there and spins its wheels and does nothing, okay? And we want the computer, the Arduino, to be doing something during that delay loop. We want it to be looking for cheaters. So we need a better way to have a pause where the computer will stop for a while, run around in a little loop, but in the middle of that loop, we want it to be checking and saying, check for cheating. We won't call it cheating. Sometimes you're just excited and you press the button early and you didn't really mean to, okay? But we need to check for a button press. Okay, so now we need something a little bit different than just delay. Well, thankfully, it's not that hard to do. We've already used a command that will wait for a certain thing to happen, okay? And that was the while command. And the while command will keep on looping around until something happens, okay? So what in this little loop right in here, 
okay, do we want it to wait for? So you need to come up with a while command. Okay, now we know that there's an internal clock inside the Arduino called millis. So we can check the time and we can say that while millis is less than whatever our time is uh, going to be in here. Uh, okay, um, then we could say start time plus random time. I'm running out of space. Sometimes your notes end up looking like this. Thankfully, I've got it a little bit neater back in the Arduino IDE, and we can switch over and take a look at what it looks like right in there. All righty. Uh, so this might be a little bit easier to read. Now, you'll notice uh, that this code is a little bit different from what I've distributed to you. And that's because I'm leaving room for you to make some edits and maybe work your own interpretation of this solution into your code. If you want to just use my solution, I'm going to go through it step by step and talk about what it does. So, OK, here we've got Reaction Game 2021 with no cheating. Now, up at the beginning, things are pretty much the same, except up at the beginning, I've added another variable right in here, OK, called delay. So uh, delay is right in here because we're going to need an extra unsigned long variable with some time in it in order to do some math down below eh, math um, to figure out how long to wait for. And uh, so everything else looks pretty much the same as we come down right in here. And uh, let's take a look at this. Uh, this is all the same. It was in here right after we started that we got to have the issue. And here we say our delay variable. OK, I think we already had that one in there. This is all the same. But now we do something a little bit different. Our time variable, OK, is equal to millis. So what we're saying is we want to have, say, a three second delay. Now, bring my watch right over here. OK, if I want a three second delay, on my watch, okay, starting right now. I say that was 32 seconds, one, two, three, and when I hit 35 seconds, I'm done. That was a three second delay. Now, in order to calculate that delay on my watch, I said, well, what's my start time? I started at 32, and until, then I added three seconds to it, so until I reached 35, I wanted to remain in that loop. So we're doing the same thing here. We're saying, OK, what time are we starting at? OK, and now I've tucked a variable in right here. And you can see here, I've actually uh, defined it inside the code. Now, you could also do this right up at the very beginning of your code. If you do it at the beginning, you end up with something called a global variable that's usable in all of your subroutines and functions. There's different ways that people will define variables, but I thought I'd show it to you here where you can just, in the middle of the code, go in and say, set aside a memory location, name it cheat, okay, make it an integer, and just put a value in there. This would actually be a really good case for a, for a Boolean, which is a one-bit variable, because all we need to know is, did they cheat or did they not? And uh, Anyway, we'll talk about Boolean variables in another video. So just make it an int for now. It's just a number. Now, zero if they didn't cheat, one if they did. OK, and we call this a flag. So if you ever see anything referring to a flag in a computer program, that somebody's you know, waving the red flag saying, cheater, cheater, pumpkin eater. Uh, all righty. So then we've got a while statement uh, right down here. And so while, and we've got a complex thing, so notice all the brackets, okay? This statement will keep on going while the overall statement is true. And in the middle of the overall statement, I've got these two ampersand characters. Now let's uh, just right click on that 
and say find and reference. Okay, this is what's called a logical and command. So it makes total sense. Okay, if your coffee is warm and tasty, then you should drink it. But if there, there's an and in there, so if the coffee's cold, you shouldn't drink it. And if the coffee's not tasty, you shouldn't drink it. Life's too short for bad coffee. Okay. At least you're assuming I've got coffee in here. That's what I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, so life's too short for uh, uh, for bad coffee. So it should be warm and tasty before you drink it. And if either of those conditions are not met, then you don't drink it. Now, there's other logical operators. There's also the logical or operator. Now, why they didn't just use the word OR, I don't know, but two vertical slashes. Um, on my keyboard, that's just above the enter key, um, is an OR operator. So if you're really desperate, you could say, well, if the coffee is either warm or hot, or warm or tasty, then I should drink it. So you would do your test and you'd say, well, it's not warm, but yeah, it's still pretty tasty. I'll drink it. Okay. Or you might do your test and say, well, it tastes awful, but it's hot. So I will drink it. In that case with an or, it sounds just like it means if either of the conditions is true, then your overall statement is true. And then we've also got the not, which is not true. Um, or and and take care of most of what we're looking here. And so in our case, we've got the logical and command in there, which means that this needs to be true, okay? And this needs to be true in order for this command, uh, this while statement to keep on operating. If either of those conditions are broken, the and no longer works and your while statement ends and you come out right down to here, okay? So what are we doing in this while loop? Well, we're digital reading our button, okay? And if that button suddenly goes low, then we set the cheat flag to one, okay? And that, as we say, is waving a red flag saying, hey, somebody pushed the button before the light turned on because at this stage the light hasn't turned on yet and we're making sure nobody pops in there and pushes that button any too soon. Alrighty, now that's really great for detecting the cheat and it's way better than the delay statement that we had because the delay statement doesn't let you put any tests or any conditions or anything like in there. It just sits there and loops around and does nothing. This one's sitting here looping around and doing something. Every time it loops around, it checks to see, did that person push the button? Okay, is that pretty good? Yeah, we've got two separate statements and you can track which statement is which by putting your uh, mouse next to the cursor and you can see that when you click on something like this, the bracket round brackets also self-identify what they're paired up with. And sometimes if your brackets don't match up, like let me just, uh, okay, if I'm off on my number of brackets right there, you can see this one is now matched up here, but there's nothing pairing up for that one right in there. If I go to compile that code, I'm gonna get an error and this time it identified it and actually came up with a message that says expected closing bracket before opening bracket uh, squiggly bracket uh, token. So if you get an error message like this, you can actually see more detailed error messages right down here by dragging this up. And it tells you a little bit about what line it's on and everything like that. Do not panic. I get errors all the time when I'm writing code, uh, okay? And I get them because I'm a little bit sloppy, but I have confidence that I can go back and fix them. And you might not yet have that confidence, but we'll get there. Okay, so while millis minus time, okay, this is gonna loop around. Now we have to figure out what are we gonna do if we do catch a cheater? Well, the first thing that's gonna happen is we're gonna kick out of this loop, and then we're gonna come over here and uh, if cheat equals zero, 
okay, then turn the uh, finish LED on. So that is if cheat, and again, here we've used the double equals because we're asking a question. Uh, did they finish this statement without cheating, without pushing the button early? And if that's true, then turn the finish light on high for them because now it's time for them to push the button. So we record the time, we wait for them to push the button, we do the math to say how long did it take, and then we uh, set the cursor down here, and now we go to print their time. If, so here's an if statement, and here's those brackets, just like those big orange bars in the Tinkercad drag and drop. Uh, this one right here, when I click on it, you can see this one down here highlights. So these three statements are all hugged together in there. And if the player didn't cheat, we print the time like we normally did. And else, so if then else statement, if this is true, then do this else, which means that they did cheat, let them know about it. And we just print too soon right in there. Okay, and uh, then we carry on right through here. And one of the things that's really important is that you do remember to reset that cheating flag each time you play it around, because sometimes we set up this code and we forget to set the cheating flag and one person cheats and the computer remembers, oh, they cheated once, I'll never let them do it again. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like now with this code up on the Arduino. Okay, press to begin. Hundred and sixty seven milliseconds, that's not so bad. Ooh, I pressed it too soon. Two hundred and ooh, that was kind of pokey. Wasn't paying much attention, need more coffee. And then if I just hold it, you see, as soon as I press it too soon, it breaks right out of there and keeps getting after me now. So it's catching the cheaters really, really nicely. So I'd like you to put that on, uh, on your Arduino and uh, give that a shot. Uh, try it with uh, people in your bubble. We're in the pandemic right now. Hopefully in future years, people are like, bubble? What are you talking about bubble? Uh, but right now, you know, um, to try this. Uh, let somebody else give it a shot. See if you can do better. Um, you know, if you've got something other than cough, well, if you've got coffee in your mug, see if a second cup of coffee makes your reaction time faster. And if you've got something else in your mug, see if it makes your reaction time slower. Um, now, who knows? We've got the, the pandemic drinking game for Friday nights. Um, Hey, I ticked on the, this video is not intended for children on my YouTube link. So I know there's no kids out there watching this, right? Um, so uh, let's see, um, there we go. It's beginning red light. There we go. Um, have some fun with it, give it a try. And what features would you add to this? So for your thing to hand in, what I'd like you to do is take a little bit of video of you playing the game and showing me you getting uh, getting this to work. I'll create a folder on D2L for my students to upload that to, and you can upload a little video showing me how this is working. Show me one where you get a good score and one where you get a cheater result, okay? And for full marks on this one, add something to it and put a comment in telling me what you've added. So things that I might consider adding in would be how would you keep track of the best time so that if you set a best time, it displays it down there? Uh, in fact, just a moment here. Let me uh, let me demonstrate. Uh, open recent. There we go. I've got a version with high score. Ooh, I'm going to pull that over there, not leave it on the screen too long for you. I guess you've got pause functions. Let's upload that. Okay, and now let's take a look at this. So the first time I play it, I'm going to get high score. So press a button to begin. 
Red light comes on 172 milliseconds. See how that says best time? Well, that was the first time out. Best time, because I was down to 147 now. Oh, but not a best time. I was up to 185. Okay, so maybe you can add a function to keep track of the best time on your code. Uh, maybe you can come up with a slightly different way to play the game. Maybe you want to play the game where you see how closely somebody can estimate um, one second. So push the button down and release it. And can you make that go for exactly one second? Now, what's your ability to estimate time? Maybe you want to uh, use the potentiometer to adjust the delay time in there, or how long it takes. Maybe it's difficult if it goes faster. Maybe it's more difficult if it goes longer. And you could use your potentiometer as an input device to control how long something takes on there. So there's lots of things that you can do to amp it up a little bit. But if you're still kind of struggling, um, just go through follow the tutorial. You don't have to add anything. Uh, if you're rocking along and this is making sense and you're like, I can make this better, go ahead and make it better. And when you hand it in, um, give me a uh, little description of what you've done to make it better. Okay, have some fun. And uh, next week, we'll teach you how to play Global Thermonuclear War.